Hello everyone, I am Erika of the storytellingjeweler.com. In May I was, I am your guest teacher at the Seed Beads and More group and we are getting familiar together with the basics of bead embroidery through the Traveler project. This is our fourth and final lesson. However, this is not our final video. There are more to come this week still. Uh, today we are going to put the finishing touches of, on our travelers. Many of you have actually already finished your pieces, uh, especially if you have made them into brooches then you, do, you will not need to apply what I am going to show you today and you can just rewatch the third lesson to get some ideas how to, how to attach uh, brooch bases or earring bases or bracelet bases to your travelers. Uh, today I am going to bead a bail, a peyote bail, on top of my pendant. I will also hang something from fun from the bottom of it and I will show you a very very, uh, very basic herringbone rope which you can use for your traveler and you can also use it for uh, lots and lots of different kinds of projects. I will also show you several pieces of mine where I have used uh, different kinds of ropes. So I am really looking forward to progress with our travelers. Before starting to work on the bale itself, I would like to demonstrate you uh, how I uh, can use uh, number 12 or 4, 4LB fireline indeed with uh, number 15 seed beads. Some of you, for example, my friend Corrie Janne from the Netherlands were wondering that how can I pass through so many times through number 15 seed beads if I use uh, a double thread and a double uh, 4LB fireline specifically or 0 0.12 millimeter for my friends who are uh, who are on the metric system. So here I have a piece of leftover fireline from my previous project and I would like to show you that indeed it is possible to pass through the number 15 several times in your embroidery when you are using double thread. So here am I, I picked up this uh, number 15, that's already like one pass of double thread, two threads in the bead, that's two passes, three, four, five, and let's see if we can make a sixth one. Six, that was easy. Okay, I think that's it. I could pass through the number 15 with my double fire line six times. So there are 12, 12 lines of thread inside the bead. Of course it also depends on your needle that how many times can you pass. For this little experiment I indeed switched to a pretty thin needle and yeah I like to use it when uh, when there is like a delicate a delicate place. So usually in embroidery anyway you don't need to pass through the beads that many times. Of course it can happen especially when you are reinforcing but I wanted to show you this. So 12 threads, 6 thread passes with a double fire line. And let's get back to the bale. So this is how my traveler looks like at the moment. I put all the finishing touches on it, so my uh, imitation leather is attached first with glue and then with small uh, stitches all around to the other uh, to the ultra suede. On this part, I added picots and the delica beads all around, and here where I have the daggers, then I used only simple 
uh, simple ba uh, blanket stitches to attach the layers to each other. And now I would like to determine that where do I exactly want to hang the uh, drop pendant at the bottom. I did not make a decision yet that what kind of drop pendant will it be, but uh, you can easily attach any kind of pendants to the picos or even to the ultra suede itself if you don't have the picos all around. And it's useful to have a ruler on hand when you are doing this, when you are determining the exact place. So I see that the middle of my coin is exactly here. There is this there is the number one in the middle. So I put my ruler here and then I see that I will need to attach my pico here, uh, to attach my drop pendant here at the bottom. And exactly opposite of it, I want to have the middle of my bale. So this pico will be the middle of the bale where I put my needles through. I can put away my ruler it's, by the way, a very handy ruler, a uh, ruler what uh, usually quilters use. So then it's easy to determine how far you are from the, from the side of your uh, ultra sweet, for example. You can work with angles. I love it. I really recommend to getting one. And back to my bail. I have the middle of the bale and I also need to make a decision that how wide I want the bale to be. So it will start with the middle bead of a pico and it will end off with the middle bead of a pico. And I think that I want to um, want to include all together like five picos. Yeah. Or maybe even a thinner one. <laughs> a thinner one. I will do a thinner one since I have the daggers here. Otherwise I would go for a wider bale. But with the daggers on the side I think a thinner, thinner bale is enough. So this is where my needle is at the moment. This is the middle of the bale and I will start from the from the middle bead of a pico on the right hand side of my of my middle uh, of the middle. If I wanted a wider one then I would start here. So I leave a little tail about ten 12 centimeters or like 5 to 10, uh, 5 to 6 inches, which I can secure later. And here it depends on the size of your, of your uh, circle that what kind of beads and how many of them do you need to fill in between the beads. What we are going to do, we will work with peyote while we will use the middle beads of the picots, of the three picots here, and we will fill in either number 15 round seed beads or number 11 delica beads. Of course, you can change it up, mix it up. It's up to you. I can, for example, try if I can fit two of the delicas, then that's one possibility, it seems all right. They have to cover the distance between the two middle beads in two neighboring picots. Yeah, I think I will go with the, with the delicas. So I'm exiting a middle bead of a pico. I picked up two delica beads and then I bead through the middle bead on the, of the next pico on the left side.
And again, I pick up two Delica beads and I bead through the next one also. Of course, you can adjust this. If you make a wider one, then you start here and you finish here. You would finish here. And also, I could make a variation where I am alternating between the number 15s and between the Delica beads. And then my bale would be, would have stripes, thinner stripes of the number 15s and thicker stripe of, stripes of the Delica beads. But I want to have it in only one color. So here I picked up a number 11 Delica and I bead back through this last pair of Delica beads I added. It's actually odd count peyote. So again I pick up one piece which will nestle on top of the number 15 seed bead and then I beaded through the pair of Delica beads which I added previously. Here I do this lazy turn of, of peyote, odd count peyote. So I beaded under, under this thread holding the pico and then I turn back through this last delica I added. Now it's like two drop peyote this part of it so I picked up a pair I bead through the middle bead and then one more time I pick up a pair and I bead through the Delica on the left hand side. When I turn back then it's one drop peyote. So I picked up one Delica, I bead back through the last pair I added. I attach one Delica in the middle and then I pick up one more Delica and here I bead under the thread between the Delica and the round 15, which is part of the Pico. So this is how I'm going back and forth by adding on my way from right to left pairs of Delica beads and on my way from left to right I am adding Delica beads one by one. You can of course also come up with a fun pattern for your bale if you want to have it multicolored. Again, I did this lazy turn of uh, of odd count uh, peyote when I am beading under this thread, and then I turn back to the left, and I will bead until I have a long enough odd count, count peyote stripe, which, if I wrap it up, it should be able to hold my hold my uh, my cord and in the meanwhile I can also secure and trim these thread ends. My peyote stripe is long enough now so it will be able to hold the four uh, bead herringbone. If I look at the side of it, then I see 11 beads. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 beads on the side. So that's enough for your, peyote, uh, for your uh, herringbone. 
uh, rope if you would like to may, uh, use one. Please always make sure that if the clasps a cusp is already attached to your rope, then just think about it that if you close the bale already, then you will not be able to uh, pull the clasp through your through your bale. So if you are using something with uh, some uh, uh, a rope which already has the clasp, then close the bale around the rope already. If not, if you will attach the clasp later, then just go on, close your bale, you can make your rope. And then before attaching the clasp, I would uh, pull it through the bale. Since I started to add Delica beads here, with the two pairs of true drop uh, peyote, I finished my peyote, uh, my peyote stripe with the like the opposite opposite uh, part. So I want to make sure that the three beads, the one in the on the right side, middle, left side, they are correlating with the beginning of my of my peyote bale. My thread is now hanging from the uh, Delica bead on the right hand side towards the middle of the bale. And now I will bead through the pair of Delica beads at the other end of the peyote stripe. So I'm starting to close the bale already. Now I will bead through the middle bead at the end of my peyote. Again, I leave it a little bit loose so you can see what's happening. Then I will bead again through the pair on the other at the beginning and then through the bead at the end on the left hand side. Now I will close it. I pulled it tight. And what I still need to do, that I need to connect this last bead to the first bead on the side, also at the, at the opposite end. So, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm exiting the Delica bead here and I need to connect it here. And now, I want to bead back to the other side of my bale. Again, by this I'm reinforcing the connection between the beginning and the end of my bale. And now a bit through this delica and I connect it to the beginning of my bale. So the bale is now finished and if you want, you can actually decorate the edges of the bale too with picots, either with like groups of three, groups of two, that's up to you and up to your design if it fits it or not. I will not decorate it further. I will uh, now secure my thread and trim the remaining part. I already secured and trimmed the tail. Now I'm doing the same with my working end. And then I will move on to the hanging part. If you want, you can leave your traveler as it is, or you can play a little bit with attaching something at the bottom. It is absolutely not limited that what can be attached, including, for example, uh, 
a metal charm. All you would need to do is that you exit the middle bead of a pico, opposite of your directly opposite of your bail. You pick up a couple of uh, number fifteen, number fifteen round beads. You go through the loop of the metal charm and you attach it to the. Uh, to the middle bead of the pico. Make sure to retrace it from the opposite direction so the loop gets parallel with the pendant and your charm will not turn like this. You can also attach different kinds of Swarovski or other crystal beads crystal pendant drops or lately I really like uh, playing with glass pendants in metal settings. This would also look very elegant I think. There are different color options also smaller ones like this. You can you could even combine several different I would do like maybe one pink in the middle oh, or maybe with the violet that's also that's also a very nice option however today I decided to attach a semi-precious stone oh by the way just one more thought you can also easily attach a tassel at the bottom. This particular color would look would look great with this combination, I think. If you would like to learn how to attach a tassel, then I would recommend to look into my Kalpana earring design, where I uh, explain it step by step. So today I will create a combination of a Swarovski bead, of a, of a semi-precious drop and even some metal components because that's also very possible to do. So I already tested it but just to make sure with my ruler I always want to see that I am at the right point that my uh, that my uh, exit point before adding the beads for the hanging part is exactly opposite of the bail. So I am exiting the middle bead of a, of a picot and I already figured what kind of combination I want to add so I start with a two millimeter round bead in a matching color. I pick up a metal bead cap that's also fun to use. It's actually matching the color of my other metal components. In this case somehow I didn't feel like combining different colors of metals as already the coin itself. It has gold and dark silver and then I added this antique bronze components so I will stay with one color for the metal components. Then I am adding a Swarovski metal bead. I will try how does this look like? Oh no, that's you uh, You can also try adding uh, metal beads but I think in this case it would be a bit too much. So I will just add a micro spacer, then my semi precious stone, okay I think I need to I need to make it a little bit calmer now I see that it has a it is a bit too much that I will I will make it a bit calmer with just a piece of bead cap. So there will be one more bead cap at the bottom of the 
Swarovski bead and then I try right away the pendant drop. There are so many possibilities that sometimes it's not that easy to decide, right? And I think this is actually a lot better. Yeah. And here I will just add a number 15 round bead at the bottom and I bead back through everything which is part of this hanging part. You can actually add more drops at the bottom. You can add like one bigger in the middle, then two smaller ones on the sides of it, or even create something asymmetrical if you like those kinds of designs. I bead through this middle bead of the pico again and then I can pull my thread tight. Here it is and I will keep retracing my thread pass and I will actually also make knots in between to really secure this part. So this is how you can add something at the bottom and if you have metal components which can't be sewn to your, uh, to your pendant or brooch before attaching the back layer because they don't have a, they don't have a loop, for example, then this would be the moment after you secure and finish your thread, then this would be the moment when you actually glue them on top of the metal. My original plan was to attach this, uh, this leaf and in this case I would, because yeah it has one loop but then it's not fixed yet, so if I used this leaf then this would be the moment when I glue it on top of the pendant, when everything else is ready, so then I minimize the risk of getting my thread tangled in this metal component. I would apply strong glue on the back side and glue it on, maybe with the rhinestone on the top. And just a couple more ideas for your hanging part, then you can also attach these kinds of semi-precious pendant drops which are drilled from the uh, front to the back. You can make variations of smaller and bigger bigger drops. Or you can also add a fringe. In that case I would definitely switch to a classic beading, thre beading thread like the Mayuki thread or 1G or the Toho thread and uh, the technique is the same that you would attach it to the bottom exiting a mm, bead in the middle of a pico picking up your beads and then beading back beading to the next pico and then back and forth just uh, when you fringe with seed beads and smaller beads then you have to make sure that you don't uh, pull your thread too much, you don't stiffen the uh, the pieces of the fringe because otherwise it would not hang that nice and, and uh, natural. With my kind of hanger this requires more thread, uh, like a stronger thread tension and uh, stronger thread itself because the semi-precious pendant drop is heavier indeed than the seed beads.
I would like to show you several different options I have used in the past for my traveler pendants or different kinds of embroidered pendants. So, the easiest you can do is that you bead a loop, any kind of loop, for example, as I just explained you, the peyote loop for your traveler, or I have a beaded bead on top of my Chinese mystery necklace, and then I used a chain spruced up by some more beads from the same uh, color as used for the main motif itself. So here what I did was that uh, I cut pieces of the chain and then I reconnected them to each other with uh, uh, with pins, with eye pins, decorated with beads. You can do the same, you can uh, you can do the same for your traveler or if you want to take it easy then you can also use any kind of silk or other, other ribbons and uh, cords. If you would like to make beaded beaded cords, then an easy way, what I recently started to use, was the a combination of 6mm round pearls and size 15 or size 11 seed beads. Then you have it ready pretty fast and I think there are so many color options that you can choose the best for any kind of bead embroidered motif. If you want to make a beaded rope, then I really recommend learning, for example, bead crochet. It gives amazing results. You can do it in many different colors. You can crochet from Delica beads. You can crochet from size 11 round beads, as I did here. This is my Aquaterra pendant, uh, for example. And here I crocheted it from uh, number 11 round seed beads. And in one circle I have six beads that gave a good size. And my recent favorite is the lemonade necklace. Shortly I will actually launch an online class, so if you would like to learn more about bead embroidery, then I would really recommend to keep an eye on my uh, Facebook page and especially on my newsletter. You can sign up at thestorytellingjeweler.com to get information firsthand. So this is my recent favorite and here I used a herringbone cord. And this is what I am going to show you today, how to bead it. I will use the same Delica beads for my herringbone cord as I used for the loop and for the edging of my pendant. And I will put this aside so you don't get distracted or I don't get distracted. And I will bead a, a herringbone rope where one circle consists of four beads. And when you start a herringbone rope, then you always start it actually with a row of leather stitch. So first I will join four delica beads with leather stitch. I like to bead twice through the beads when fixing up the leather stitch part just to make it super strong.
I have three beads now. And I'm adding the fourth bead with leather stitch. When I have all four of them, then I will connect the first and the last Delica bead to each other. Again, retracing the thread path to make it stronger, to make the connection stronger. And as you see, I created a little square out of the four beads. And now I pick up two Delica beads and I bead down, I bead through the neighboring Delica bead from this leather stitch part. I bead up through the next one and I repeat this step. I pick up two Delica beads and I bead through the neighboring Delica. So now I attached two pairs of Delica beads to the four Delicas forming this first little square. I want to step up at this point so I will bead up through the bead in the leather stitch part and through the first Delica of the first pair I just added. In the second row of herringbone Let's say there is a row of leather stitch and then I started the rows of herringbone. I picked up again a pair of Delica beads and then I bead down through the second bead of the same pair of, her of uh, two Delicas. I bead up through the first Delica of the second pair I added previously. I pick up two Delica beads and then I bead down through the second Delica of the second pair. Now, as you see, I have completed another row of herringbone. Just as before, I bead up through two beads And then I repeat it. I pick up two Delica beads, I bead down through the second bead in the same pair. I bead up through the first Delica of the next pair, of the second pair of the previous row. I pick up two new Delicas and then I bead down through the second pair, second bead of the second pair. And again, I bead up through two Delica beads. It's actually the first Delica of the first pair of the previous row and the first Delica of the first pair of the newest row. And this is how I create my rope. Always picking up two beads, beading down, beading up, adding another pair, beading down, and when I completed 
the row, then I bead up through two beads to step up to the next row. So this is a quick and easy way of creating a herringbone rope for your for your traveler pendant. Then at the end you can either uh, attach a beaded clasp as I did with my lemonade pendant or you can attach a ready-made metal clasp. That's completely up to you. So this was our fourth and final session, final lesson of creating a traveler motif. I hope you enjoyed beading with me and learning my trips, my tips and tricks. I had lots of fun beading with you here in the Seed Beads and More group. This is not the last time we have seen each other because uh, I am still coming with a Q&A session where I can answer all your questions right away. You can also uh, start posting them below this video and then I will look back through them and I will answer everything in the live Q&A session. And I would also like to show you some other possibilities, so, uh, how you can in the future improve your embroidery skills. Moreover, I would like to invite you to check out my page, thestorytellingjubeler.com. If you have enjoyed beading with me, then I promise that you will enjoy browsing through the page, browsing through the tutorial and keep an eye out for my upcoming upcoming bead embroidery and bead weaving classes. I am really looking forward to creating more with you and especially I am looking forward to see your finished traveler project. I wish you a lot of fun on your uh, embroidery journey. Bye bye!